Christian faith is to take seriously the narratives of those who have encountered the faith in so many creative and mysterious ways. By elevating the inner working of God's grace at work in his own life, Paul helps his readers to understand more fully the wisdom of God's redemption in Christ. Just as Brian Doyle knew that telling stories and being a witness to what God was already doing was his purpose, Paul is telling us that his story and our stories can point to God's grace already in the world. So who are we really? What is our purpose? What are the stories that we need to share? This month in our sermons, we've been looking at some animated movies, talking about the spiritual themes in them, because Pastor Greg at Sinai School taught the class God at the box office, where they looked at such things. This week, we are going to talk a little bit about Turning Red. It is a movie that came out just this year. Anyone seen Turning Red? Oh, a couple of us have seen Turning Red. It was in the theaters. Now it's on Disney+. Plus. Um, uh, it is a movie about a young girl who is coming of age and struggling with her identity. And throughout the movie, she's trying to figure out answers to questions like, which influences will she listen to? Will she be who her parents expect her to be? Will she live up to what her culture and her religion ask of her? Will she listen to her friends and how they are encouraging her to act and to see herself? I will tell you that this movie has received criticism in some Christian circles because it depicts a Chinese temple religion. It's certainly not a Christian movie by any means. But it does explore these themes that show up in adolescence and when you get married and new parenthood and midlife and as we age, who am I now? What is my purpose? How do I want to show up in the world? I have had the privilege over these last five and a half years of walking with our confirmands and some of our youngest members among us and talking with them about these and other important questions. I've had the honor of hearing and bearing witness to many of your stories and the glimpses of God's grace that you have seen and heard. As Archbishop Desmond Tutu famously said, we are caught up in a delicate network of interdependence. So I will take those stories that you have shared, those glimpses of God's grace, with me as our family soon moves to Oregon. The impact that this congregation has had on the faith of my children as they have grown from toddlers to preteens will reverberate with them for the rest of their lives. Paul prays for us in this passage. Paul prays that Christ will live in us. Paul prays that with our feet firmly planted in love, we will be able, through our own lives and stories, to take in the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. The breadth and the depth and the height and the length. Paul prays that we will live full lives knowing that God can do anything, far more than our wildest dreams and imaginations can even comprehend. I can think of no better prayer to leave this beautiful congregation with in my final weeks with you. Firmly planted in love, may you be able to comprehend how loved you are. May your own story shimmer with glimpses of God's grace. May you witness and sing and point at shards of holiness. May you share the good news of God's love with everyone you meet as if you would the cure for cancer. 
May you, the church, know your purpose as an instrument that God uses to turn God's vision into a reality right here, right now. May it be so. And amen. We hear now our offering of special music. The Shearer family will sing for us. so much for sharing your music with us this morning. We come into a time of prayer lifting up those concerns and joys that are on our hearts for those we know for issues around the world. What do we want to pray for today? Julie. for a friend in labor uh, with twins who has COVID and so we'll have a, a long hard journey these next few weeks. Pete. Prayers for a friend with pancreatic cancer. Prayers for a friend with pancreatic cancer. Yeah, Teresa.
Wonderful. Joy, tell me again who was married. Oh, yes. Yeah, the Agnesses. Yes. Yes, they were married yesterday. Wonderful. Jane. Prayers for a friend, Dee Dee, who's had several strokes and is suffering from depression. Yes, David. Prayers for uh, my friends who need to hide their sexuality from their parents because their parents don't accept them for who they are and to every other youth who feels that they don't belong to something they can't change. Prayers for a friend who feels they have to hide so that their parents will accept them and for all young people who don't feel they can be truly themselves uh, and belong and be accepted. Don. Prayers for Paul Drodas, who is uh, suffering from severe cancer. Prayers for Paul Drodas, suffering from severe cancer. Barb. Prayers of thanks for the doctors <coughs> and Heidi and, and Greg who spent with us. Prayers of thanks for the wonderful ministry we've been able to share together these five and a half years. Greg, and then Jennifer. Prayers for Gwen, who went into labor yesterday. Prayers for Gwen, who also went into labor yesterday. Jennifer? Prayers for Joy, uh, today will be the first time in three and a half years of my whole family to be together. Prayers of Joy, that after long COVID uh, absences, your whole family could be together. Yes. Yes. Prayers for the people of Ukraine going through a very difficult war. Yes, Denise. Prayers for the people of Kentucky after the disastrous floods there, the loss of life and property, and not knowing where your family might be. We bring all of these prayers together to our God. Our corporate prayer this morning comes from Brian Doyle's Book of Uncommon Prayer. Uh, his, this is his prayer for the church, which he names, My furious prayer for the church I love and have always loved, but which drives me insane with its fussy, fidgety, prim, tin-eared thirst for control and rules and power and money, rather than the one simple thing the founder insisted on. <laughs> so this is the prayer. Let us pray. Granted, God, it is a tough assignment, the original assignment. I get that. Love. Lord, help us. Could we not have been assigned something easier, like astrophysics or quantum mechanics? But no. Love those you cannot love. Love those who are poor and broken and fouled and dirty and sick with sores. Love those who wish to strike you on both cheeks. Love the blowhard and the arrogant liar. Find the Christ in each heart, even those. Preach the gospel and only, if necessary, talk about it. Be the word. It is easy to advise and pronounce and counsel and suggest and lecture. It is not so easy to do what must be done without sometimes shrieking. Bring love like a bright weapon against the shadows. The rabbi did not say build churches for general use or convene conferences or issue position papers. He was pretty blunt about the hungry and the naked and the sick. Jesus was not reasonable. We forget this. The church is not a reasonable idea. The church should be a verb. When it is only a noun, it is not what the founder asked of us. Let us pray that we are ever after dissolving the formal, officious, arrogant thing that wants to rise and ever fomenting the contradictory, revolutionary, countercultural thing that could change life on this planet. It could, you know. Let's try again today. And so.
Let us pray together in one voice the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Let us rise in body or spirit as we are able and sing together. Our closing hymn, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. We will sing one, two, three, and five together. Let us sing. <laughs> 